All right, welcome to an intro to C++. Uh, my name is Jarman. I'm a program coordinator here at Supernova, and I've done uh, computer programming for about five years now, and I studied uh, mechanical engineering at Dalhousie University. So I did a lot of different things to, to bring me here. So we're going to go over some of the basics of programming in C++. I've got Dan, you want to tell us about yourself? I'm Dan. I'm on the computer science team. I'm going to be, or I'm in my third year of computer science at Dalhousie. Um, this is my first webinar. Yeah. And we got Mira here too. Hello, I'm Mira. I'm in my fourth year of computer science at Dal, and I'm excited. So they're going to be moderating and answering most of the chats. So uh, try and keep the chat messages to questions. Uh, that way it doesn't disappear with a lot of extra text, but we'll be using the chat mostly uh, to send messages back and forth. So let's, let's get started. Um, you might want, be wondering what C++ is, and it's a pretty popular coding language. Uh, it's used for a lot of different computer applications, um, even video games. Uh, and this language gives you a lot of control over the resources of the computer and the memory, which is why it's popular uh, with a lot of coders. So we're gonna be using um, an online compiler. So I'll send that in the chat bubble. So the first thing I want you to do is go to onlinegdb.com. And I'll share my screen so you can see what that looks like. So. So can everybody see my screen? Good, good, good. Did everybody get there? So just open another tab in your Chrome or internet browser and go to onlinegdb.com. And so the first thing, if you're not using the online compiler, you'll need to create a source file. And what that does is it tells your computer that uh, we're going to be making a certain type of program and it gets the compiler ready. Mine is showing a permacode. Oh, pre-made code, yeah. They will show pre-made codes. Um, I took mine out, but I, I could show you what that looks like. So we'll reload my page, and you're going to see just a blank or pre-made something. Uh, but we'll go over all the pieces of it as we go. So I'll create a new project, and there's my blank code. So this is my new source file. Uh, if you're using DevC++ or Xcode, you won't see the source. There won't be any pre-made stuff. Because this is online, they help you out a little bit. And the idea is, so we'll clear that out. And depending on where you are, you'll want to go to language. And this compiler actually lets you do all kinds of different things. So you can do Java or Python, um, or we're going to use C++. And so they call it an online debugger tool. And that's because you can quickly it doesn't actually, I don't think it uses Golang. Let's see. It does. So it uses Golang, which is Google's uh, programming language. It's very similar to C++. Uh, so if you're used to using Go, that should be exciting for you. So if we just clear it out and that this way there's nothing there, uh, we'll go over some of the C++ syntax basics. And so before we do anything, Blank lines mean nothing. So you can have, you know, hello, and then your next code is my name is. And those blank lines in between, the compiler knows to skip them. So it's okay to have a lot of blank spaces to help make it readable. And all of our statements, like int x equals 10, all of these will end with a semicolon. It's like the period at the end of a sentence when you're writing, 
So C++ uses semicolons to tell it that it's that statement is over. And it's also case sensitive, which means that X is not equal to capital X. So if you were to type number is some something in your program and later on you used a capital N, these would be recognized as two different variables and your program would break or it wouldn't, it wouldn't operate correctly. So every file in C++ uses, uh, starts off with the libraries. And what a library does is it contains a bunch of pre-written code that we can use because uh, they have functions already built in. So instead of having to program addition, subtraction, or program uh, math functions or advanced code, it's already pre-done for us and we can just use them. So that syntax or the way that that's written out, it always looks like hashtag include and then the name of the library. So that's always the same format for all of the syntax libraries. Um, so our first one, and I'll get you to do this with me, is hashtag include and angle bracket open. And then we're going to go I O stream. And that's our first library. You always want to do this at the top. Uh, so you don't have to have these comments. So the first thing we have is include IO stream. And what that does is it lets us input and output into our program. So a few important ones that we uh, you'll probably use a lot is include math. And that gives us access to um, advanced math functions like square root or powers exponents. And it, so that's filled with math operators. And another very common one is include string. And so these three uh, let us input to the program, let us take outputs from the program, give us access to math, and the string library uh, lets us manipulate string information. So we'll stick with those for now. Even if we don't use them all uh, today, it doesn't hurt the program to load them because they're ready to use whenever you want. And so at the after your library declarations, uh, we have to include a using namespace and that's STD. And so what this is, is you're telling the computer or the compiler that we're going to be using a standard namespace. So that's what the STD is, the standard. And this allows us to use any function that's part of the namespace collection. And it's okay if you don't fully understand what that means, but in C++, it's a, a general collection of things that are always used. So just make sure any project you have has the, in, the using namespace standard. So now we've included all of our libraries and set up our project, but we have to include a main function. And so what the main function does is that's the driving force of our program. That's where everything gets run out of. That's the first thing that gets started. And so it's kind of the hub of where everything gets called out of. And any other function you make will be called or branch out of the main function. And so to start it, it always begins with a declaration of a data type, int, followed by main, so that tells us that we have an integer type and main is the function. And then and we'll talk about data types in a little bit. Uh, and then we open it with two round brackets. And so what we're saying is with the data type int, it's going to return something in here. But with our main function, we never return anything. So we can type void, which means there'll be nothing come back when the main program or the main function is done 
and the and the game and the and the program. So you can say void or you can leave it blank. Uh, a lot of times I leave it blank just because it's quicker. And then this one doesn't end in a semicolon. It actually ends in an open curly bracket and a closed curly bracket. We'll put a space there. And so now we've just declared our main function. Perfect. Yep. Yeah, so the round brackets are on top of nine and zero and the curly brackets are just below uh, minus and plus. Is everybody on track here? So far, so good. So if there's anything you're missing, just drop a comment in and uh, the round brackets. So do you have a full keyboard? So with a full keyboard, you just hold shift and press the number nine for the open bracket and the number zero for the curly bracket. And that should get you your brackets. So nine is that one. Zero gives you the closed one. All right. So this is our main function that we're going to use to run everything out of. And the curly brackets just indicate that it's a function and everything inside in between them is part of that function. Uh, so that's where our main code is going to go. And it's like a sandwich. So anytime you call out a function or you're defining a function, it has these curly brackets. So now we have a function. And if we run it, it'll run. So you can click the green square at the top. It'll compile it and run it. Oh, I lost connection. That's all right. But nothing happens because there's no code to run. So I'll stop that. Oops. So what we're going to do is we'll have to declare some variables. And what a variable is, is it's something we can use to reference it all throughout our program. So it's some information we want to keep stored away somewhere. Uh, so we talked about data types a little bit. So data types are not only apply to variables, but they apply to our functions and arrays. And so in some coding languages like Python, you don't have to declare a data type for any variable, but with C++, you have to declare it. And so it always takes the same form, which will be data type is, and then the variable name. And then that equals some kind of value. And so what that looks like is, uh, we'll start with int because we did that already. So we'll say int number equals zero, for example. And so our data type is int. We're giving it the name number and We'll call it zero for now. You can call it five or anything. And so there's a few main types, data types. So the first one is int. The second one is a float. Third one is a char. Oh. The fourth one is a string. And the fifth one is a bool. And so these five main ones, Int gives you a whole number, so that would be one, two, three, et cetera. And it can only have whole numbers. Um, so it can store any number as long as it doesn't have any decimal points. So if you're doing anything that needs decimal points, then you can use a float, which would have 1.0, 1.2, 5.5, anything like that and it can have up to nine decimal values. 
So it can be pretty big. Um, and that's that's useful when you're doing a lot of math operations and you might have, you know, five divided by two is not a whole number. It has a decimal value, two and a half or fractions. So a char is used to store um, any single character. So it could be it could be any of them, but it can only do one at a time. And so sometimes if people are, you're making a program that type Y for yes, type N for no, you only need a single character to be stored or a single character of information. Uh, but it only does one at a time. So if you're trying to make sentences, we use strings, which will store um, names or anything that in a sentence. And so we use strings a lot for passing back information or typing to the screen information that people might need, uh, explaining how to use your program or explaining an error. And then Boolean only has two values. It's either true or it's false. It can't store any information. It can only be true or false. And so if you have uh, an if statement or a, a program that will stop if something's false, then you would use a Boolean. That way you can't override it with numbers or letters. So those are our main types. I'll have to get rid of those before I run it again. And then something that's important is how we name our variables. So I named my number because that's useful to me. But depending on what you have, you may want to change it to um, So if you're going to make a string type and it's going to hold somebody's name, then you would do that because it a name is more valuable to read throughout my code than n equals name because uh, that can get confusing for people. So we, we want to name it something that is uh, readable and something that is directly related to what we have. And we have to be careful because capital name and lowercase name will come up as different. So I'll get rid of all that. So far so good. All right. So I've got my int number equals zero. Uh, and this is what's called initializing a variable. And so by initializing this variable to zero, now if you don't, what will happen is number will, the program will just store a value to number. And we don't want it to just store any value because it could be 5, 20, 3.4, and that would mess up all our program going forward or could mess it up. So we initialize it to zero or some letter, um, initializing strings that we don't know what their name is, for example, we just give two empty brackets or quotations, sorry. So that makes it an empty string and this number zero. We don't want it to cause any failures in code. So these are, these are what's called local variables because only the main function can see them. If I was to declare number outside, That's what's called a global variable. So number can be seen by the main function. It can be seen by um, a new function that we make later or anything. So that's called a global variable. The danger is if you change it in one spot, it changes everywhere. So we use a lot of local variables. All right, so we've got our number. our main. Let me clean this up a little bit. So that is great. We've created a program that stores zero to a variable, but that's not really useful. We can't interact with it. So we've already included our input output stream. So make sure you have this top line include IO stream. 
because next we're going to actually interact with our program. And so we've this library gives us the C out and oh, C out and it gives us C in. And so the two of these, we use them with angled brackets. So the angled brackets are below K and L. Uh, so C out lets us output to the screen so we can have hello world. I want everybody to try that. Hello world. That's the always the first program is your basic hello world function. And you should see at the bottom of your screen, it should say, hello world. Did everybody get that? My compiler is not playing ball with me today. The less than and greater than symbol. So right next to the shift key on the right, there's the comma and the period. So if you hold shift comma, you'll get the brackets. And if you hold shift period, you'll get the close bracket. I forgot actually a semicolon on mine, so you need that. So if it's not working, what are the errors you get at the bottom? It should say like there, I have a fatal error with math and if my computation failed. So I can actually get rid of that and see if it works this time. What's not working? Do you have an error or is the compiler not running? Because mine keeps disconnecting from the server. But if you get an error at the bottom, it should tell you what's going wrong. The compiler? Okay. If the compiler keeps disconnecting, then we'll just make sure your code is typed the same as mine. Uh, and what we can do is you can highlight the whole thing and control C to copy it and refresh your compiler. So changes might not be saved and that's okay. And then we can type in control V for Victor. That'll bring back our old stuff. We can try and write it again. but it looks like the website is struggling today. Oh, I got my terminal screen. Beautiful. So you should see a black screen at the bottom and some output and then it'll end the program. I lost connection. Cool. All right. The compiler is not doing the best today, uh, but we'll keep, we'll keep going and then, you'll have this video to reference when we do it again later, or so you can try again when the servers are back up. Sorry about that, everybody. 
Hey, you got the terminal screen. Good. Good, good. So we'll just keep going. So that's our basic text. Now, if we wanted to include a variable, then we'd have two more less than brackets or angled brackets, and we put the variable name. So for me, it's number. And what you'll see is hello world, and it should say zero. So that's pretty cool. But I'm going to change this instead of hello world, which is our first program. So we are going to say, please input your favorite number. And we'll put a space so it's a little bit readable. And so now we've got it asking us for something and we want to be able to input. So that's still the same IO stream. And but this time we're going to use C in. And instead of less than we're going to use greater than. And so it kind of points to the variable you want to store to. So I'm going to use my number variable. Make sure you end with a semicolon. So what this should do is type to the screen, input your favorite number, and then it'll wait for you to type something. So you can type 10 or 15 and press enter. But now we've changed number to some value that we, we'd like, and we want to see that on the screen. So to output to the screen, it's again C out, less than, less than, or angled brackets. And we'll use backslash n. And what this does is it gives us a new line. So not everything is in one big long line. And we'll use another set of angled brackets. We'll say your favorite number is. Now we have it on a new line telling me what my favorite number is. And then of course, we want to add a variable number, semicolon to end it. And so hopefully, if this all works, if the compiler will play ball with us all today, it should give you a black screen, ask you for your favorite number, and then when you type in and press enter, so my favorite number is 14, enter, and it comes back with your favorite number is 14. And you're gonna see at the end, program finished with exit code zero, that is the int void. So that, that's the main function ending. Did anybody get that to work so far? Is the compiler back up to speed? So far, so good. Ah, good to hear. Good to hear. I'm glad. So that is kind of the basics of, of inputting and outputting and using variables. Uh, the idea behind a compiler is it takes our English words, int, number, C out, please input, all those things, and it converts it into binary text that the computer understands. So computers, they don't read English like we do. They only, they only know ones and zeros. And so the compiler converts our language into theirs. It's like a translator because I can't read in ones and zeros. I'm not, I'm not that good at that. So I have to use English words. And so any compiler will convert it for us. So that is, that's kind of the basics. Um, does anybody have any questions or anything you want to try? No, so far, no. So after that, we can do little things like um, C out number five is. And so because we've stored a value to number, we can say number 
we can declare a new variable. I'll call it new num. And we can do mathematical operations on our program. So we can say new num is equal to number plus five semicolon. And so they don't need any brackets because they're integer numbers, math numbers, not strings. And then with our C out, your number plus five is, we'll use angle brackets again, new num, semicolon. Oh, I typed U number. I have a typo. So I'll say 15 is my new favorite number. So you can see here, because I didn't put the backslash N, it all goes on the same line, which is kind of ugly. So I'm going to add backslash N and fix my typo. Your number plus five is. So what will be my new number today? I'm going to go 100 because it's such a nice number. My favorite number is 100. And plus 5 is 105. So you can do a lot with that. You can make people type in um, different stories or different information and, and do math tricks or uh, anything like that. So that does anybody have any other questions? about computer science or C++. So the, the last thing I can show you, which will give you a lot of power for programming, is an if statement. And so, an if statement checks if something is true. So you can say if number is equal to five, then we can output to the screen winner. Oh, I missed a semicolon. It's gonna it's gonna break. So the terminal here tells you if there's any problems. And so if typically has curly bracket or round brackets to declare it and semicolon at the end. So, so far it's running good. So I want my number to be five. So my if statement works and we can see my number plus five is 10 and it outputs winner. So from there, you can do all kinds of things. Uh, you can make people input multiple values, multiple numbers after every step. So you, and you can ask them, you know, if two plus two is equal to four, and if they don't write four, then you can say try again instead of winner. And it's really up to you at that point how you use C++ and this, this program terminal. But that's all I have. So hopefully you took something away from this. Um, just an introductory here. I'd like to challenge you to try and make a math helper that will multiply, divide, and add any two numbers that you put in. And if you figure it out, I'd love for you to send us an email or uh, tweet us or Instagram us or anything like that. Whatever you use, I'd love to be able to see some of your programs that you come up with. And I'll leave it open for any questions you have, anything you might want to know about C++ or computer science. And if not, thank you for joining. It's been fun. I, I hope you took something away. No questions? Sure. 
Well, that's the end. So if you have no questions, thank you. Uh, I enjoyed it a lot. I hope you did too. And you can just log off. Uh, in order to log off, you can click your person's face and leave the session. Or you can click the three lines in the top left and leave the session. Thanks, everybody.